This conference will now be recorded. Hello, am I audible? I'm not sure. Yes, uh, okay. Today we are going to discuss about the topic developmental dysplasia of the hip. This is otherwise known as congenital dysplasia of the pulse. Recently, it's known as developmental dysplasia. Uh, coming to the normal development of the hip of humans, in seventh week, establum and hip are found in the same mesenchymal cells. And in eleventh week, there is separation between the two. That is, establum differentiates and femoral head differentiates. And proximal uh, ossification completes by four to seven months. This is the normal hip. Here you can notice that the hip is well located into the acetabulum cup. This is known as tight fit of head into the acetabulum. What is the definition of developmental dysplasia of hip is? It is a spectrum of disorders of development of hip that presents in different forms. That is, the, the hip may be dislocated, dislocatable, or subluxated. The different terms we will be dealing in the next, uh, next slide. Coming to the epidemiology of the condition, the common etiology is laxity of hip capsule. Although the common etiology is still unsure, this is just a hypothesis that is, uh, hip capsule is lax which leads to failure of maintenance of the femoral head in the acetabulum. Uh, strangely, this condition is more common in females, that is 80% of the uh, affected people are females, 1 in 1,000 live births, and 10 in 10,000 births with subluxated or uh, dysplastic hips. Uh, as I told you, the different terms dislocated, dislocatable, and subluxatable. These are the different terms used to define the dis uh, DDH. Dislocated. This is the severe form of DDH where the head of the femur is completely out of the cell. Dislocatable. In this case, the head of the femur lies within the acetabulum, but it can easily be pushed out of the socket during the physical examination. Okay. Subluxatable. This is the mild form of DDH where the head of the femur is simply loose in the socket. It keeps moving in and out from the socket. Okay. Uh, this picture shows the different types of uh, uh, DDH. The first picture is the normal. Second is subluxated. You can notice that part of the femoral head is in the acetabulum and part of it is out of the acetabulum. This is called subluxation. Third form is dislocation. Dislocation is completely, it is out of the acetabulum. The cause is, as I already discussed, the cause is pretty unclear. The common hypothesis is the family history. When one in the family is affected, the others in the family or the progeny of that that person can also be affected. That has not been yet proved, but that is one hypothesis. And gender. Eight in ten cases of uh, DDH patients are females. Pregnancy conditions, oligohydramnios tend to increase the incidence of uh, DDH. And it is known this firstborn babies are more common with DDH. Any uh, congenital abnormalities is more common in the firstborn child. Mostly DDH babies are more uh, associated with other abnormalities like cerebral palsy, spinal cord syndrome, problems, and other nerve and muscle disorders. Breach position is one, uh, one position which increases the incidence of DDH in the babies. Symptoms. This is the picture depicting the symptoms of DDH. As you can see, there is a limbland discrepancies. The right, the right lower limb of the baby is a little shorter than the left, and there, there is a like asymmetrical gluteal fold and excessive folds over the right thigh. This is depicting feature of DDH when the baby can't walk, when the baby is still a neonate. This is how you differentiate from the normal. Form. Different limb lengths, no outward signs, uneven skin folds, less mobility or flexibility on the affected side. And the baby is walking, they would tend to walk with the limp or toe or, or waddling. Now, this type of gait depends upon the intensity and severity of the DDH, duck like walk. Okay. How do you diagnose this uh, DDH in a neonate? This is a general protocol to screen every, uh, every newborn baby for DDH. The different tests and manuals to, uh, to identify. A neonate with the DDH. These are Ortolins test and Barlow's test. These are the commonly done tests. How do you do this test? I'll tell you. This is Ortolins manual. Keep the baby safe on a, on a couch and tend to. This is the first picture there where there is a already dislocated hip. In second, 
you are uh, relocating the dislocated hip that is orthotics manual hold the hold the baby over the thigh near the knee and tend to put the downward pressure you can see downward pressure downward directing arrows and tend to put the downward pressure and abduct it so that it will be relocated you will hear a clicking sound if the uh, if the femoral head is relocated this is positive ortholunx manual this is a barlos manual this is reverse or reverse of ortholunx manual in barlos manual you are dislocating the hip in a position you have got opposite of ortholunx that is outward pressure and abduction then you are dislocating the uh, relo normal hip that is this is a clinical test you need to do on every newborn baby to identify ddh and the other thing as we already discussed there are many associated abnormalities with ddh you will have to perform head to toe examination to rule out any cerebral palsy torticollis or other ligamentous laxity like dislocatable shoulders and all neurological and spine examination these babies are generally combined with the spina bifida and all so you need to rule out all those conditions so you need to perform head to toe examination spine and neurological examination key physical findings are limb length discrepancy limb length discrepancy can be identified by gelagis test the second picture depicts the gelagis test you see this abnormal uh, here you can see abnormal uh, levels of uh, knee joints this is positive gelagis test ask the baby to hold flex the hip joint and knee joint and check for the symmetry of the knee joint lines this is gelagis test and abduction for the range of movements and skin fold already discussed skin fold if the baby is walking look for the limp or waddling gait in bilateral involvement you will see hyperlordosis after physical examination you need to confirm your diagnosis confirmation of diagnosis can be done with different diagnostic methods that is x-rays ultrasound ct mri and orthogram ultrasound is the most uh, gold standard for diagnosis of ddh because in the children in neonates up to 6 months you can't see the you can't visualize the femoral head in the x rays that is ultrasound is the most important investigation but uh, the negative part of ultrasound is that it is an operator dependent so coming to x ray these are the two lines this is known as the vertical line is known as perkins line and the horizontal line is known as pilgrims line usually the femoral head falls in the inner quadrant by the of the inner quadrant of bisecting these lines but in dislocated hip you can see that this has moved outwards this is one feature which differentiates it from the normal hip the other one is the shenton's line shenton's line is the line continues from the inner border of the femoral head neck and the upper the outer rim of the acetabulum if this line is broken you can say that if there is something with wrong with the femoral neck or head in ddh you can see shenton's line is broken this is the shenton's line this is broken and the femoral head is the upper and outer quadrant of the lines bisecting this uh, perkins and hilligan's line ct is absolute but that is not uh, highly indicated in neonates because it causes more of radiation and orthogram this is done for the open versus closed reduction to check whether the already the joint is reduced or not so the gold standard of imaging is ultrasound and x-rays this flow chart says uh, the timing and the decision making in treatment of ddh see if the baby if seen that is subluxating and observe for 3 weeks if it's stable you need not intervene if it is subluxating even after 3 weeks proceed with the fab pavlic harness this this is the pavlic harness baby is kept in the abduction and maintained with this harness even in the pavlic harness there is subluxation then check for the neuromuscular examination this is the section of subluxation this is a mild variety of ddh coming to ddh in the severe variety that is like dislocatable form if it's non reducible then check for something is wrong with the muscular problems if it's not reducing then you will have to go for the open reduction if it's reducible continuous with a pavlic harness if it is reduced wear it for 3 months then wean uh, regularly 
and maintain with the abduction brace. Not reduced at the end of two weeks, reevaluate, then perform closed or open reduction. The basic theme of this, uh, this flowchart is that you will have to divide the hip into subluxated or dislocated forms. Subluxated, observe for three weeks. If it is stable, no treatment. At the end of three weeks, if it is subluxating, go on with pavlic corners. Dislocatable hips, non reducible hips, straight away go with operative treatment. Reducible hips, go with pavlic corners. And they are not maintaining the reduction. Again, close to open it. Uh, this is the picture taken from the uh, pediatric textbook. How to maintain and how to treat the DDH in different age groups. In neonates, that is from one month to six months, pace the uh, patient in pavlic carpets. This is the gold standard of treatment. This has to be started very early in age, that is at age of one to six months. Six to eight months, try closed reduction. If it's not successful, then attempt for the open reduction. Open reduction is something you cut open the joint, place the femoral head back in the stable, and stitch out, stitch out the structures. It can be done via anterolateral approach. In 18 to 24 months, closed reduction can be tried, but a closed reduction is not generally possible in 18 to 24 months. You'll have to proceed with open reduction. If it is necessary, you will have to perform an osteotomy that you have to cut through the bones of femoral head and place back in the position. From 24 to 6 years, the primary treatment is open reduction and femoral shortening with or without saltus osteo. This is the pavlic harness. This is spica, hip spica. This is another way. These days we are not doing this. Warm dose and splint. This is the next stage when the baby has crossed the six months and pavlic harness is already done. This warm dose and splint is done, uh, is applied to maintain the abduction. Here you can see that three tongs, one at the thoracic level, one at the shoulder level, one at the thigh level. This maintains the abduction of the hip joint. Surgical treatment. If the baby is not maintaining the reduction in spite of all those splints and all those spike cans, then he'll have the production of produce. Uh, You'll have to go on with the surgical management. The main theme of surgical management is open reduction. If you fail to do the closed reduction in two attempts, you'll have to proceed with the surgical management that is open reduction. Then you'll have to do the osteotomies either on the acetabulum side or femoral side to maintain the reduction of the hip joint. This is the basic outline of DDH and treatment. And uh, does anyone have any doubts? Ma'am, what is pavlic harness? Yeah, yeah. Okay. This one, this one. This is the type of brace. Pavlic harness is a type of brace which is main, which is used to maintain the abduction. This has two wings here. In one wing, you're placing the foot. And the other, it is the shoulder straps. You'll have to maintain the abduction, which is equivalent to the length of the shoulders. This length has to be maintained here. Just to maintain the re uh, reduction of the hip joints. Is that clear? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Anything else? Okay. Coming to the outline of DDH, this is more common in females. But, uh, the cause is unclear. Oligohydramnios, family history, genetic mutations. These are the common hypothesized causes. Every newborn has to be screened for the DDH. The two uh, clinical examination techniques are outlines and Barlow's method. I have already told you. Is the uh, are the tests clear for you? Okay. Atlas and Barlow's are two tests. Then for uh, for confirming the diagnosis, you'll have to proceed with X-ray, ultrasound, and treatment options. Up to six months, you'll have to maintain the kid in the public harness, and later bone rose and splint, open or close reduction, and osteotomies. Anyone has any doubts? Okay, then we're closing the session now. This conference will now be recorded.